Number one, set goals. Unless you shape your life, circumstances will shape it for you. You have to work, sacrifice, invest, and persist to get the results you want. Choose them well. You can't start your planning until you know where you want to go. You are the sculptor of your own image. Have others already done what you want to do? Study them and do what they did. Start anywhere, at any time, and persist. Stop worrying about what others think you can or can't do. Believe in yourself and your abilities. Have the self-confidence to challenge your current situation. This is your life to live. It's day by day and step by step. Write down your goals. Only 3% of people have written goals, and only 1% review those goals daily. Be in that elite 1%. Visualize the attainment of your goals often. Goals are dreams with dates attached. You will only become as great and as happy as the goals you choose. Number two, divide and conquer. A common denominator among the successful is that they are focused on the immediate accomplishment of specific objectives. Separate the important from the urgent and allow time for both. Break down any large task into a series of small tasks and start taking action. In the beginning, don't be too concerned with how you will achieve your goals. With commitment, research, and patience, the means will come. Answers materialize when the facts have been collected. Your goals will evolve into a set of action-oriented objectives, which will become a series of to-dos. Now, prioritize. If you don't prioritize your day's activities, everything is of equal importance. Whether one thing gets done or not doesn't matter. You want your activities to be important, to have a clearly defined purpose. Write your to-do list every day. Prioritize it. Make at least one of your daily objectives a challenge. At the end of each day, you'll be able to relax and bask in that wonderful feeling of accomplishment. Number three, write a personal mission statement. Create for yourself an evolving document that outlines your purpose in life. Who are you? What are your values? What do you intend to do with your time to make your one life meaningful? Accepting acts of God, it is you who determines your future. You don't have to listen to those who say you're too old or too young or too poor or too unattractive, too uneducated, or the wrong color, gender, or nationality. They are not speaking of someone following the action principles. When you read inspirational passages in other books, magazines, or newspapers, write them down or clip them out. Put everything together in a folder or box. This will serve as your motivational reserve and will help you create a personal mission statement. Your mission statement only has to be a few sentences or paragraphs. Refer to your mission statement periodically and don't be afraid to change it as you grow. A mission statement will help you to establish a foundation upon which you can build your dreams and goals, and from which will flow your objectives and daily to-do list. Number four, follow through. Follow through to make sure that you've done the job right. Follow through to say thank you and offer new ideas. Follow through to ask for more business. You can earn respect by saying what you're prepared to do and then doing exactly that. Follow through shows that you are a person of your word and someone who cares. It shows that you are accessible and that you want to keep the lines of communication open. You may make mistakes, 
and follow through gives you the opportunity to correct and learn from those mistakes. Personalize your follow up with handwritten notes and phone calls. Small gifts, tickets, and lunches may also be appropriate follow up incentives. Check up on yourself and reap the rewards. Follow through amplifies your effectiveness. Number five, submit to a higher power. Look at the big picture. You build your life upon your faith. You cherish your faith. You aren't afraid to tell others of your beliefs. You stand for positive values. You are ethical in your dealings. You pray and meditate to have the courage to face your fears. You pray and meditate to have the strength to accept, endure, and triumph over the hardships and small daily annoyances that the path to success will present. You celebrate the good that you find in the world. With humility, submit. You are but one fragile, fallible human. Every religion has prayers. A prayer is your conversation with God. Your success and happiness is God's answer. Your selfless good works in helping others are your prayers put into action. Number six, don't complicate your life. Think before you act. Look for the simple ways or answers first where less can go wrong. Work from your basics. Make sure that you understand the assignment or the problem before you begin. What are the time and performance expectations that will indicate satisfactory completion? Re examine how you are doing things. Is a task consuming all your time? Is it worth the time you are investing? Do you have the necessary resources? Can it be delegated? If so, is the right person assigned to complete the job? Your research, your quiet time, your commitment to teamwork, and your prioritized to do list all help. Pare away the unnecessary. Even the philosophy underlying these action principles can be stated very simply improve yourself and help others. Number seven, commit to never ending improvement. Constantly seek ways to do things better in all areas of your life. The Japanese have a word for the concept of never ending improvement Kaizen. Progress and ultimate success come to those who train and keep training. If you choose to stop and become aware, You can become a better spouse, son, daughter, friend, employer, employee, athlete, and citizen. Commitment comes from the inside out and is tested often. Measure yourself against the best. Most others will choose to be average. This is what average means. You won't know your limits if you don't keep trying. Reject the idea of good enough. Commit to excellence. Take each of your goals and think of how you can improve 1% each month. Success is a journey, it is not a quick fix. The joy is in the doing. Think of success not as a peak to be climbed, but a high plateau to be walked. Always encourage children or employees to do their best and to keep going. Set the bar high for yourself and them. You will all be the better for it. Number eight, be frugal. Separate your wants from your needs. You want to work for all you need, not necessarily for all you want. You do not have to sentence yourself to a lifetime of hard labor for the false trappings of status. Living on less can eventually yield much more. The simpler you make your life, the easier it will be to maintain. 
think in terms of moderation. It is easier to buy things than to sell them. You can make a comfortable life for yourself by finding contentment in the things you already have and holding reasonable expectations. Be pragmatic. To build an investment bankroll, you can work more or you can spend less. Many people who write and stick to a household budget find that the simple act of thinking and organizing before spending can yield savings of between 10 and 15 percent of their earnings without seriously compromising their lifestyles. Give yourself a raise by being frugal. Number 9. Make today special. Many people enjoy using the first few minutes of the day for their reflective time. How did yesterday go? What do you want to accomplish today? What will be the most important? This, of course, becomes your prioritized to-do list. How will today vary from your usual routine? Can you think of any small things that you can do? Perhaps there is something that you've been avoiding that if you do it, would make you feel especially proud of yourself. Give each day a specific purpose. For unsuccessful, unhappy people, there is often a sameness to their days. Is it Monday or Thursday? Is it March or November? Is it 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 10 o'clock in the morning? They're in a rut, and it doesn't matter. Everyone has the same amount of time each day. How are you going to spend your 24 hours? Plan in advance. Make lists. Lists are your roadmap to personal accomplishment and balanced living. Always carry paper and pen. What are you doing today to ensure a better tomorrow for yourself and your family? Number 10. Record your thoughts. Carry index cards, a handheld computer, or a small notebook. Borrow napkins to write on. As you become an action-oriented person, positive thoughts will occur with increasing regularity. Write down your ideas. You will have good ideas because you will have many ideas. Review your notes during your quiet time or before bed. You will become your own best therapist. You will see the ways to solving your own problems, finding your route to happiness, and realizing your dreams. Spend most of your time thinking about solutions and not problems. Get back to recording your thoughts. Number 11. Use the power of patience. You can handle most problems because you know that only a little time stands between you and your goal. It may take 20 calls to make a sale. Be patient. It may take you 5 attempts to quit smoking or lose weight. It may take 10 applications to get the job you really want. The point is that you try and keep trying until you succeed. Most people quit too soon. Be persistent. Be patient. Concentrate on your major goal until you have achieved it. It is not what you did yesterday. It is not what you may be doing today. It is what you are prepared to do every day. That one cold morning when you want to roll over, but instead get up and go to the gym, is a defining moment. Remember that all wealth, all businesses, all real estate, and all treasures eventually pass from old hands to young. Be prepared. Your time is coming. Number 12. Maintain a positive mental attitude. A positive mental attitude results from a life dedicated to self-improvement and service. 
with a personal commitment to doing your best today. You don't have to be overly concerned about tomorrow. You can be confident that good things will happen and be equally confident that if trouble comes, you will have the strength and the skills to cope, take control, and then conquer. You are tough. You stay at it. You don't allow your doubts to destroy your dreams. Hope does spring eternal. You are thankful to have the curiosity to keep learning. You are grateful to see opportunity knock so often. You are thankful to have the personality to keep making new friends. Your mind can only hold one thought at a time. So make that one thought positive. Count your blessings. The way is clear. The world is a better place because you are in it. Number 13. Risk Failure. Be ready. There is no better time to start taking positive action than right now. You research and you have confidence in your preparations. You don't allow yourself to become paralyzed by indecision. You realize that a time comes when you must act. If you hesitate too long, doubts will linger and turn into fears. Yes, you may stumble. Yes, you may be rejected. Yes, you may fail. This is life. Life's winners accept that in trying, they may have to adjust and even start again and again. The difference between successful people and others is not whether you make mistakes or even temporarily fail, but how you respond. Many people look for guarantees before taking independent action, yet, in seeking assurances, they frequently receive cautions, which can easily be used as excuses for inaction. Be aware that those who love you may be the loudest in warning you not to take risks. Number 14. Get Tough. Tough means that you're willing to stand tall and persevere. Even when your mind and body signal perfectly good reasons for giving up, you go on. This tough is obvious, but tough can be seen every day if we choose to look. Tough can be a patient undergoing cancer treatments or a single mother struggling to raise children. Tough can be an alcoholic ready to face rehab or an athlete living in a wheelchair. Tough can be rejecting false praise and honestly accepting you and your children for who and what you are. Tough is an ability to make the best from what you are given. Tough is making the decision to replace self-pity, complaints, and dependence with self-reliance, independence, and action. You've got to be tough to do the big things in life like taking risks, admitting mistakes, and changing bad habits. You've got to be tough to do the little things like biting your tongue, waiting your turn, and putting up with fools. Self-reliance and self-confidence will demand your toughness. Then, you must temper toughness with kindness. Realize that many times it will be tough to be kind. Be kind anyway. Number 15. Cause change. The status quo may be comforting, but for there to be growth, there must be change. Since you seek growth, you must seek change. You must see yourself and your environment not only as it is, but also as it could and should be. You seek the changes necessary to reach the better you so that you can play your part in making a better world. First, you change yourself. Can you change your day and spend more time with your family? What are the possible consequences of not changing? Realize that many people don't make plans because they don't want to risk any change. 
Doing little with your life is much easier and safer than taking risks. But then you will be a small person. Instead, seek the changes which will allow you to be all that you can be. Number 16. Pass the test. Life is a test and the points on that test are earned by how much attention you give to improving yourself and helping others. When your test is graded, to what will you attribute your success? Study, hard work, personality, talent, skill, opportunity, connections, patronage, or luck? No amount of material success earned and kept will be awarded credit. The greater your blessings, the greater your obligation to share your good fortune. Use your special talents to serve the common good. Let your actions be motivated by a commitment to charity and justice. Be compassionate, kind, and considerate. Free yourself from your attachment to things. The action principles are your ideals. Right now is the time to consider your blessings. Start scoring points. Number 17. Accept differences. You see each person as an individual and not as part of a group. All humans from all countries and cultures are equal without regard to race, color, creed, or gender. Believe with confidence and trust that the vast majority of people whom you meet, befriend, or do business with are more similar than different from you. People are inherently good. Most people act in good faith. They mean you no harm and would assist you in time of need. Don't waste your time thinking otherwise. Do not become a party to rumor or gossip. Reject stereotypes and the divisive and demeaning policies that group people into categories. Be the first to build bridges of tolerance and understanding. Number 18. Master Success. There is a master inside you. It is an ideal. It is you at your best. Keep working. You are calm, thoughtful, patient, and confident. You are honest, trustworthy, responsible, and reliable. You are loyal and proud. You are humble and reverent. You are tough, self-reliant, persistent, and hardworking. You are organized, neat, and poised. You are inquisitive and teachable. You are healthy, vibrant, and enthusiastic. You are kind, friendly, helpful, and generous. You are brave and daring. You are moral and ethical. Number 19. Spread your enthusiasm. Putting the action principles to work in your life will elevate your soul and lift your spirit. You will feel a zest for life. You will live full in rich days. And this will happen because you will have taken the quiet time to think, organize, and prioritize your days. You will love many things, and these things will become part of your day. You will be in control. Every day you will do good things for yourself and others. Words like boring, bland, and uneventful will rarely describe your work or your relationships. Listen to your favorite CD. Call a friend. Read a good book. Smile, hear, see, feel, smell. Take a walk and look at all the wonders of your world. Let everyone in your life know that life is worth living. 
be known as a motivator. Ask others about their goals and how you can help them. Make people feel part of a successful team. Solicit their input. Keep everyone informed and involved. Establish performance incentives. Look for opportunities to praise and reward. Enthusiasm is contagious. Number 20. Applaud the beginner. You walk into a karate school for a first visit and see kicking, punching, blocking, chopping, and flipping. It can be intimidating if you've never done these things. Or you may look and feel awkward learning to ski or rollerblade or taking a foreign language. But persist. This is your first day, and there will never be another first day. Any new endeavor may be tough in the beginning. Accept this. You must believe in yourself. Initially, critics may feel free to ridicule your ideas and goals as foolish and unrealistic. When you ultimately succeed, everyone will claim to have been on your team from the beginning. Take action and persist. Applaud those who try because the first step is often the toughest. Welcome the newcomer. Number 21. Give yourself the gift of self-reliance. If there is one gift that you can give yourself that will enhance the overall quality of your life, it is self-reliance. You already possess everything you need to succeed. You can work on your own schedule toward your own goals without feeling pressured by the demands of others. When you are self-reliant, if you lose your job, you'll get another. If you lose that job, you'll start your own business. You can make more money as a self-employed handyman applying the action principles to your work than a lazy lawyer will ever earn. You need the will, the self-confidence, and a realistic plan. As a follower of the action principles, you will have them. Life just can't get you down because you are in control of yourself. Number 22. Lead by example. Start acting immediately as the person you will be. A person of character with a sound reputation. Your words, your manner, your attitude, your dress, your posture, and your actions are all reflections. In modern society, people are constantly bombarded with visual and auditory messages. People need cues to sort good from bad and to find order so that they can make decisions. In many aspects of your daily life, you are giving off cues that can be positive or negative. If you speak well, dress appropriately, smile, are courteous, work hard, volunteer and don't complain, you give people shortcuts to view you in your best light. You must never expect others to do what you would not do. You must be fair, firm, friendly, and dependable. If you have to correct someone, do it in private. You have succeeded as a leader when your team works just as well in your absence. Be constantly on the lookout for heroes in your own life to admire and emulate. Adopt their styles. Then, lead by example. Number 23. Control Conflict. Remain calm and detached. Allow others to rage while you consider the appropriate response. Should you reason, 
agree, apologize, fight, or leave. What is to your benefit and to the benefit of those you must protect? Arguing often makes the other party become more defensive and determined to prevail. Let go of your anger. It only clouds the issue and draws you into a quick response. Whenever possible, use kindness as a weapon against evil. Neutralize shouting with soft words. Answer threats with serene confidence. Speak plainly. Don't use foul language or sarcasm. Breathe deeply with long exhalations. Let the anger wash over you. Maintain your presence. Don't exaggerate. Don't lie. Attack the argument and not the person. Long-term relationships are almost always more important than short-term problems. Be an active peacemaker, building bridges of understanding. Number 24. Listen to your instincts. I don't feel comfortable here. I don't like the sound of this. This doesn't look right to me. With regard to your body or surroundings, your instincts are your best early warning system. Listen to the inner voice. Listen to that gut feeling. Go to the doctor. Leave the party. Get away from these people. Quit this job. Don't open the door. Duck into that store. The world is an imperfect place. There are dangerous places and people. Every once in a while your instincts may be off and you may feel foolish. Err on the side of safety and your instincts may save you from danger. Give yourself time or space to consider your options. It is foolhardy to do otherwise. Number 25. Face fear. Knowledge, practice, and courage are your weapons against fear. One person can step out of a plane at 2,000 feet without hesitation. Another can stand before an audience of 2,000 and give a speech without breaking a sweat. Fears can be rational or irrational, but they are always personal and real. Everyone fears something. To diminish a fear, you must first face it. The 100th skydive or speech won't be as traumatic as the first. The best way to deal with your first fears is through a combination of logic and bravery. Logically, most people who jump from planes or give speeches don't die. They succeed through preparation. If your equipment is right and your training is complete, you are ready to jump. If your speech is carefully crafted and practiced, you are ready to speak. Associate with confident people. You have seen many people who have already done what you fear doing. Now, do what they have done. Courage grows with action. Fear is learned and must be unlearned. After facing that fear, you will feel exhilarated. Without fear, there can be no courage. Fear provides the opportunity to be brave.
Number 26. Don't be a perfectionist. Trying to be perfect takes too much time and effort. It creates too much stress and is impossible anyway. Instead, strive to relax at the 90% level. This is the personal mastery level. Following the action principles, reaching the 90% level in most of your financial and social endeavors will be something that you don't even have to think about. It will happen through your persistence, determination, hard work, and nice personality. Right now, learn about the income and lifestyle of those who are in the top 10% of your profession. If you aren't content earning more than 90% of your co-workers, choose another profession. It is possible to try too hard in business, exercise, and relationships. Overwork can produce stress and anxiety, which is the opposite of the inner peace you seek. Your best is good enough. Live to a high standard, not to an impossible obsession. Number 27. Remain adaptable. In daily life, through a love of many things, it is possible to remain adaptable. If it starts raining on the way to the beach, you'll enjoy going to the movies. If you are kept waiting for an appointment, don't get angry. Make a few calls or work on your schedule. If you get stuck in traffic, enjoy your favorite motivational audio tape, radio station, or CD. Always have a book with you, and you'll never be alone. The small stuff can't get you down if you're ready to substitute one good thing for another. Number 28. Think Win-Win. Thinking win-win is a frame of mind that seeks mutual benefit and is based on mutual respect. It is about bargaining fairly and being open-minded and reasonable to all parties. It is about compromise and a sincere desire to find agreements that occupy the middle ground. Win-win is not taking advantage when it is understood that you are being trusted to act with honor. It's about thinking in terms of abundance. There is an ever-expanding pie, a cornucopia of opportunity, wealth, and resources, not scarcity and adversarial competition. Number 29. Be proud. Take pride in who you are and those values and beliefs for which you stand. Be proud of your education, work, and personal accomplishments. Be proud of your spouse, children, and extended family. Be proud of your home and neighborhood. Be proud of your country. Be proud of your body, personal grooming, and your manners. Be proud of the sports teams and cultural organizations that you support. Be proud of your government officials when they stand selflessly for the public good. Don't be afraid of who you are since you act with courage and compassion. Tell others and bask in the feeling of being your best. Teach others so they too may be proud. Number 30. Be decisive. You don't have to wait for permission to do the right thing. Be decisive. Take the initiative. Get the facts. Do it now. 
If you don't have time to send a letter to a sick friend, send a card, a fax, or an email. If you can't visit your mother, call her. If you see a gift that a friend would love, buy it for him or her. If you can't go to the gym or dojo for 90 minutes, go for 40 minutes. Avoid not doing things because you can't get them done exactly as you'd originally planned. Be bold and get in the habit of doing something. Walk down one block, pay three bills, spend 15 minutes with your children's homework, give five dollars to charity. Small efforts done continually can yield significant positive results. Do it now while it's on your mind. You don't have to be perfect to live the action principles. Just be a person of action. You must have more than good intentions to succeed. You must act. Get it done. Start it now. Number 31. Be the warrior. The warrior is tough in loyalty, intensity, determination, bearing, initiative, endurance, courage, and strength of will. The warrior is soft in calmness, self-confidence, and compassion. The warrior is frequently called upon to step forward when most would gladly step back. Warriors exist on the battlefield and in daily life. People may react to you rudely, selfishly, and with malice. Be courteous anyway. Those you help may whine and offer no thanks. Help them anyway. Your honest words may be challenged and ridiculed. Speak anyway. Success may involve many mistakes and disappointments. Succeed anyway. Your donations may seem too small to matter. Give anyway. A warrior is a master, ever prepared to improve and to be of service to others. Number 32. Embody integrity. As a follower of the action principles, you are proud, strong, friendly, generous, and successful. Many will seek your counsel. People will depend on you. Have faith and a belief in your cause. Know what you will fight for and what you won't. Do not compromise what is right. Stick to your convictions and principles as you allow your ethical values to direct your decision-making. Integrity goes beyond self-interest to moral courage. Lying only leads to more lying. Keep your promises. Fulfill your commitments. People want to know where you stand and for what you stand. People respect honesty and sincerity, but hate hypocrisy. Be consistent. Speak in clear, precise facts. Be sure your words match your deeds. Do what you say and your credibility builds. You cannot speak stronger words than, I give you my word. Number 33. Stay centered. In the battles of life, you will take punches. Some may hurt. This too will pass. You are the center of your universe. Take care of your own needs first. Then go to your family, then to friends, neighbors, and employees. Move on to the larger communities. Don't use saving the world 
as an excuse to forget your family. Don't allow others to push or pressure you before you can decide what is right. The most important thing that a father can do for his children is to love their mother. Stand with your knees slightly bent, head up, breathe deeply from your belly. You are a very small part of the grand scheme of things. You are one with the universe. You are everything and nothing. Remain calm, balanced, and aware. Number 34. Love many things. You proportionally increase your chances for happiness by increasing the number of things that you love doing. Love many things and your enthusiasm will escalate into an enthusiasm for life which will have a positive effect on you and those around you. Seek and enjoy those things that give your life value and purpose. To love many things you must be adventurous. A boring life is your own fault. Try new things. Be excited and passionate about life. Feel good. You must be able to see beauty in the grand scheme of things as well as in the details. Discover music, art, books, food, tai chi, karate, theater, travel, movies, sunset, exercise, friends, gardens, and the internet. Open your mind. Find your preferences. Make your home, office, and dojo beautiful places to love. Keep going. Remember how lucky you are to have so many interests. Happiness may not be the result of financial success. Happiness is a result of loving many things and appreciating what you already have. Number 35. Forget everybody. Not everybody wants to do business with you. Not everybody wants to be your friend. Not everybody wants world peace. Not everybody wants to work hard. Not everybody wants to be president. Not everybody is smart enough to be a rocket scientist. Not everybody is fast enough to run in the Olympics. Who is helped by pretending otherwise? Trying to accommodate everybody is a trap. It can't be done. Be yourself. People know their own problems better than you do. Not everybody will listen to reason or even act in his or her own best interest. You can. Number 36. Maintain your presence. Your contented presence shows an air of simple elegance and refinement in attitude and form. You appear physically, emotionally, and spiritually strong, yet you seem to have even greater strength and reserve. You are poised, coordinated, and balanced. You command with effortless, assured confidence. Be calm. Be deliberate. Feel assured and alert. Feel good. Keep your head up and your shoulders back. Keep your eyes forward. Breathe deeply. Speak with a soft voice in a thoughtful manner. Rarely interrupt. Be brief. Walk with a purpose. Don't rush. Have a firm handshake. Your eyes are friendly. Your demeanor is respectful. Let your smile begin in your mind. You exhibit both style and class. First impressions are lasting. The things you want drawn to you will come as a result of your good nature and determined persistence. Pause and savor the moment. 
begin your work. Number 37. Act as you feel. When you feel in the mood to do something, this is the best time to do it. If you feel happy, smile. If you feel daring, act. If you receive good service, compliment. If you feel energetic, do something positive. If you know a good joke, tell it. If you feel generous, give. If you're interested in becoming wealthy, save and invest. If someone needs help, lend them your strong hands or soft voice. If you give your word, keep it. If you want to make things better, vote. Number 38. Appreciate your appeal. Following the action principles makes you an appealing, charismatic person. Students will want to learn from you, bosses to promote you, banks to lend you money, and customers to buy your products or services. Your allure will be your genuine selflessness in wanting to help them to achieve their objective, whether it is to be a black belt or buy a car. By not trying to be a salesperson, but a true customer service person, you will make more sales. Charisma isn't painted on the outside. It comes from the inside. Be honest. Be yourself. Adopt this attitude and you will be liked by many. Immediately. Number 39. Develop your sense of humor. In all areas of life, a quick wit, a hearty laugh, a smile, and a warm sense of humor are appreciated. To be a good joke teller, tell jokes often. Practice. Model your delivery after comedians you admire and funny friends. Start a joke file. Always be absolutely sure that your material is clean and non-offensive. Stick to a universally funny subject. You. Most of the best humor is self-deprecating. That is, you have to learn to laugh at yourself. On your road to success, there will be many stumbles and fumbles, providing many opportunities for you to turn the unexpected into stress-reducing laughter. Don't sweat the small stuff. Laugh about it. Be affable. Humor will add to your attractiveness. Number 40. Become grateful. Life isn't exactly the way you want it to be. You will have your ups and downs and crosses to bear. You will have opportunities to practice holding your tongue and exercising patience. Yet, because you are focused on the larger picture, you will be able to keep everyday events in perspective. Be grateful for all you have. Acknowledge and accept compliments. In the larger scheme of things, you may wish to be grateful for good health, a supportive spouse, a rewarding profession, obedient, healthy children, conscientious employees, prosperity, religious faith, loyal friends, and even winning sports teams. You add and choose. 
why not write letters to people in your life who have made a difference and thank them? You will both feel better. When you can look forward and be thankful, you can help others do the same. Hold the burning candle from which others can light their candles. Embrace gratitude. Number 41. Show loyalty. Be a stand-up person. You stand for your family, country, and friends. When and if trouble comes, let others have no doubt that they can count on your help and support. Your commitments don't waver with the moods of the moment. You don't hesitate to act. At work, you build customer loyalty by concentrating on service with an attitude clear to everyone that customer retention is very important to you. You don't run a business solely dependent on finding new customers. You are consistent, devoted, faithful, and true. You stand for your beliefs and values. You aren't afraid to pledge allegiance to what is right. This is loyalty. Number 42. Practice forgiveness. Anger, hatred, bitterness, resentments, and thoughts of revenge are heavy weights that slow a person down. Allowed to fester, these negative feelings can consume increasingly larger portions of your life. Liberate yourself. Let it go. The forgiving person is always stronger. Be like the rock in the stream and let thoughts of revenge flow by you. As a person of action, improving yourself and helping others, you will make lots of mistakes. You will do foolish things. Learn the lesson. You practice forgiveness for yourself. Consider those who you may have offended or injured and ask for their forgiveness. Can you say, I'm sorry and I apologize if I offended you. If you ask and your request is rejected, you have lightened your burden in trying. Continue to encourage efforts at reconciliation. Number 43. Demonstrate your love. From the Bible, we learn that love is patient and kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-serving. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. It is responsibility and a willingness to work out problems. Love is too wonderful and too powerful to be kept bottled up. Let it out with your smiles, your voice, your manner, your enthusiasm, and your continuing acts of kindness. For love, you can risk being vulnerable. When you find love, cherish and safeguard it. A loving marriage and family is worth all your efforts. Number 44. Be prudent. Just because you deserve victory doesn't mean that you will win every fight, game, or argument. Someone else may have the tactical advantage. Have the self-confidence to know when not to fight. Perhaps the smartest course of action is to retreat and reflect upon your options. 
Can you return to challenge on another day, better equipped, more experienced, and stronger? The non-action of the wise man is not inaction. It is not shaken by anything. The heart of the wise man is tranquil. It is the mirror of heaven and earth, emptiness, stillness, and tranquility. Wise men don't fight each other. Number 45. Develop your special talent. You were born with a special talent. It may be to sing, write, teach, paint, mentor, preach, defend, or befriend. You have something special to offer the world, something that you can do better than 10,000 others. You must keep learning and trying new things to find your special talent. The world needs your gift. Be aware that even a special talent can go stale if you don't keep using and honing it. Endeavor to keep your talents and all your skills up to date. An advantage isn't an advantage unless you use it. Find ways to use your advantages to set and reach your goals. Likewise, you should recognize and then try to minimize the impact of your limitations. Remember that not all advantages are transferable. Just because you're talented in one area doesn't mean that you will be talented at everything you try. The successful real estate investor can easily lose her money opening a restaurant. Stick to your advantages and don't stray away from them without reasoned justification. Number 46. Be persistent. Modern life can make you soft. The status quo may become comfortably familiar. You can actually begin to believe that you're doing all that you can do, or that doing more isn't worth the effort. Challenge yourself. You must start the positive momentum in your life, and then you've got to stick with it day to day. You don't need someone to tell you not to smoke. If today you smoke a pack, tomorrow smoke 18, the next day 17. Improve. If you haven't read a book recently, read one. If you don't exercise, take a walk around the block. If you're shy, say to five new people, good morning. You know yourself. You know what improvements you need. You don't need somebody to tell you not to jump from a 50-story building. So why would you need someone to tell you not to take drugs, to exercise more, eat a sensible diet, talk to your kids, or compliment your employees? You know what to do. Keep going. No one can say that you failed until you do. Keep taking small steps toward your goal. Challenge the you who is content with yesterday's accomplishments. Take a deep breath. Changes that last a lifetime begin in a moment. With persistence, only time stands between you and your goal. Number 47. Develop winning habits. If becoming a success were easy, everyone would do it. It isn't. They don't. As a follower of the action principles, you can. 
you can develop winning habits while identifying and working to eliminate your bad habits. Be patient. Psychological studies have shown that it takes about 30 days to begin to form or begin to rid yourself of a habit. You can keep your word even though this may not always be easy to do. You can write and focus on your goals and objectives and your to-do list. You can exercise when you're tired. You can read business materials. You can volunteer. You can give a little extra money to charity. You can give a little extra time to family members, students, and customers. You can pick up litter on the jogging path. You can delay gratification. You can do a lot while others are idle. You won't always want to do these things. You will feel that you are doing more than your share. You are right. Work on your habits. You are tough. Number 48. Do what others can't. Most people can't give two nights a month to volunteer at a hospice. You can. Most people can't get up at 6 a.m. and jog two miles. You can. Most people can't give up their lunch hour to solve a customer's problem. You can. Most people can't help to clean up other people's messes. You can. Most people can't help a friend deal with destructive behavior. You can. Most people can't give 5% of their money to charity. You can. You are following the action principles. Number 49. Accept hard work. Great accomplishments come from hard work. Luck accompanies hard work. If necessary, be prepared to endure temporary hardship. At times, the work is going to be hard to do and you would prefer doing something easier. Accept this. Put enthusiasm into your work and you will reduce boredom. Commit yourself to hard work and be thankful that you aren't lazy. Laziness makes all work difficult. From day one, you accept the premise that by following the action principles, you will work hard and give much. Don't cheat or look for the easy way out. Bask in the feeling of exhilaration and accomplishment that few will experience. If you work hard, you will never go hungry. In the end, you will discover that all the hard work was worth it. Work hard and don't wish that your life were any other way. Get accustomed to doing what others can't or won't. Number 50. Venture outside the box. It would be nice if there were logical step-by-step -step instructions for every step on your success journey. But there aren't. You learn from your own experiences and by studying the experiences of others. Then you often have to find your own way. To find an answer, you may have to go outside the box. If all graphic designers are offering computer-generated work, maybe your niche is hand-drawing. If your daycare center competitors are strict about pickup times, maybe your niche is to be flexible. If none of the other landlords in your area allow pets, maybe you do. 
being a little different can be profitable. If you can't earn a degree full time, perhaps you can take evening or correspondence or online courses. If you are worried about starting a business, you can consider buying an existing business or a franchise. If you can't exercise because you have to babysit, how about taking the kids for a walk or run with them? Don't give up. At times you may have to improvise and be creative. Quitting or not trying isn't an option. Number 51. Communicate with ease. Can you talk your way out of most tough situations? Can you talk your way through to decision makers to build up your sales? Can you talk to the media and garner positive press for your business? Can you talk to 500 people and win converts to your cause or position? Being an effective communicator can take you a long way and is a skill worth developing. Be yourself. Believe in your own words. It doesn't matter if you're talking to one person or a thousand. If you want people to like what you say, persuade with modesty and build your audience up. Listen to good communicators and model yourself after them. How do good interviewers ask questions? How do good public speakers work? How do good salespeople sell? To communicate well, you can't get stuck on transmit. Pause before you speak. You must listen and speak with purpose. Get to the point. Create interest with visual aids. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you've told them. Sit down. Don't let technology leave you behind. Learn to communicate via email and the internet. Number 52. Avoid negative people. You have one life to live. You want to be happy and to make your life meaningful. You don't have to waste time with negative people. They will drain your energy. When they find a willing audience, they won't let go. They may have justifiable concerns, but too often get involved in minor matters. They blame and look for excuses. Even when blame can be justified, it serves no productive good. They are usually negative because they have ceded control of their happiness to others. The boss, the neighbors, the kids, the politicians, the police. Be polite and encouraging to negative people. You can be compassionate, but still strong enough to walk away. Everyone has problems. But not everyone allows these problems to rule them. You can offer a temporary safe haven without becoming a permanent home. You do not have to sacrifice your life to the problems of another. Number 53. Stay fit and healthy. Be prepared to succeed both physically and mentally. You don't know when you'll be called upon to defend with a block, a blow, or a word. You can swim, run, or rollerblade. You can take a walk. Staying fit also helps to prevent injury and helps you to deal with stress and fatigue. If you want to be thinner, start putting out more calories than you take in and you will lose weight. Start now. If you want to be healthier, add more fruits and vegetables to your diet. Drink a lot of water. If you want a strong heart, do 20 minutes of vigorous calisthenics every day. If you want to look good and feel strong, work out with weights three times a week for 30 minutes. You don't need fancy gym equipment to be fit. You don't need a lot of time. You just need the will to start and persist.
Number 54. Relax your body. In your personal dealings, remain loose and light. Eliminate stress. There is really need to be tense and hard-headed. Much can be accomplished through calm reason and a soft voice. Most physical movements should be loose, light, fluid, agile, and flexible, rather than tense, hard, rigid, and stiff. Slow, deep breathing will calm anxieties, lower your heart rate, and allow for concentration. Massages, steam baths, saunas, and whirlpools also help the muscles to relax. Make sure you get your rejuvenating six to eight hours of sleep per night. At any time, start counting backwards from a hundred as you breathe deeply. Let the air fill your body as you inhale and exhale, more slowly and more fully with each breath. Quiet your muscles and relax. Number 55. Invest in your future. Today investors sacrifice and spenders enjoy. Tomorrow, investors enjoy and spenders keep working. If you buy a house today, you may have to work two jobs to make the mortgage payments now, but you may own the house without debt in 20 years. If you give up TV tonight, you can take an evening course and in six years earn a college degree. If you start training today, you may be sore tomorrow and a black belt in four years. Invest in yourself. Most wealthy people save between 15 and 20 percent of their income. Invest in fields in which you have a specialized knowledge. If you sell cars, invest in the auto industry. If you are a real estate broker, buy income properties. Be sure to diversify your holdings by investing in a retirement plan and a no-load mutual fund. There is a time value to money, so the earlier you start investing, the better. Invest in things that appreciate rather than spend on things that depreciate. Secure your own retirement. Number 56. Retire early. If you didn't have to worry about earning a living, you could concentrate on your personal potential and being of service to others. You don't have to be a millionaire to retire early. In fact, if you had savings of half that amount, invested prudently, you could retire and earn an annual income that exceeds the annual income of 75% of the people in the United States. Over half of the people in the United States have less than $10,000 saved for retirement and live from paycheck to paycheck. They have no definitive financial plans. You are different. You now have a financial goal to retire early. Consider this. After 20 years of saving 20% of your income, you may create the choice of not having to work for a living. Consider this. An alternative to saving 20%, can you earn 20% more if you work 10 hours a day rather than 8? Or 6 days a week rather than 5? Number 57. Have faith. Look around the train, the classroom, or the office, and you will probably see ordinary people who are going to live ordinary lives. There's nothing wrong with this choice. But you feel differently. You read this book and you feel empowered. You go to success.org for more training. Your mind fills with ideas. You find mentors, 
You research, you dare, you persist. You make money, you save, you invest, you succeed. You put your free time and extra money to good use. Many around you could have done exactly the same thing. They didn't. You did. Why? You can't easily answer all of life's questions. You must have faith. Thank God for making you extraordinary. Thank God for helping you see so many possibilities. Thank God for making you a person of action. Number 58. Follow your code of honor. As a follower of the action principles, you adhere to a strict code of honor regarding your personal behavior. Your honor becomes your shield. You do not need to prove your might at the expense of others. You do not need diplomas or wards or the acclaim of others to know who you are. You don't need an audience to do the right thing. You do not need a lot of money or many physical possessions to be happy. You do not need to stand first in line. You don't need lessons to act civilly. You do not need prompting to help someone in need. Number 59. Enjoy your quiet time. Everyone needs quiet time in their day when they can just be with their own thoughts. This isn't daydreaming. The serenity of quiet time can be enjoyed in a variety of ways. It can be traditional Zen or transcendental meditation. But it can also be taking a walk, gardening, making a pot of tea, or taking a long hot shower. You may wish to pray. Each day, take 20 minutes to stop, reflect, and enjoy being who you are. Think about the past, present, future, or nothing in particular. Relax by yourself and you will feel renewed. Tranquility will re-energize you. Without trying, you will be amazed at how your subconscious mind releases so many good ideas. As you reflect upon the true sense for your existence, you can better deal with hardships. Just as the time you spend exercising strengthens the physical you, quiet time strengthens the spiritual you. Quiet time also gives you the opportunity to practice minding your own business. Take a deep breath and continue to breathe slowly and steadily. Look around. Use all your senses. You will find contentment in the solitude. Number 60. Look in the mirror. Look at yourself as your family, co-workers, customers, students, and the general public may be seeing you. Endeavor to like and admire what you and they see. Don't kid yourself and fall victim to self-deception. Success means nothing if you are a professional athlete on drugs. Success means nothing if you are a doctor who is abusive at home. Success means nothing if your sole aim is to make your own life easier. You can't honestly judge others if you can't honestly judge yourself. You cannot build a stronger self if you rely upon what may be the self-serving false appraisal and expectation of others. 
do yourself a favor and be honest with yourself. Are you doing all that you can do? If you are not honest with yourself, doubts and fears will haunt you. During your quiet time each day, contemplate the thought, Is this the way I want to be thinking and acting? Make self-reflection a daily habit. Pay close attention to yourself. This is character building. Number 61. Imagine. Imagine that you can give your family all the money they need. Imagine that you can give your family all the time with you they need. Imagine that you will be seen as a respected leader in your community. Imagine that your students will like you. Imagine that your employees will work hard for you. Imagine that people are telling you that you are making a difference in their lives. Imagine that you can accomplish all that you want. This is not a daydream. This is a result of following the action principles. Number 62. Hold sacred. Your religious faith your family, your good name, your given word, your moral code, your self-reliance, your positive attitude, your healthy lifestyle, your self-improvement, your love of learning, your willingness to share. Number 63. Focus on your strengths. Rely on your strengths. To know your strengths, you must first acknowledge and then compensate for your weaknesses. Ask your friends and mentors, what am I good at? And what areas should I improve? What do you do better than most people? Don't be afraid to ask for advice or help and don't be afraid to listen to the answers. Reflect and learn. Knowing yourself allows you to plan your days for peak performance. In business, solicit comments on your products and services. Customers and employee compliments and the complaints are important tools to improve efficiency. Who knows you better? Accept your limitations. Accept your circumstances. Following the action principles, you should have more than enough of everything to succeed. Be the best that you can be on the inside, and your beauty and confidence will be reflected on the outside. Number 64. Understand courage. There is a difference between physical and moral courage. If you earn a black belt in karate, you may be called upon to be physically courageous, but such events will be extraordinary. Even police officers, firemen, and military personnel may only have to be physically courageous a few times in their careers. Moral courage may mean the challenge to stay with the belief when your position may not be the most popular. Moral courage can be standing tall against bigotry, prejudice, unfairness, and bullying behavior. Moral courage is a challenge to do what is right regardless of the personal consequences. Moral courage may ask you to forgive. Think of people in physical pain or mental anguish. You may see courage being lived every day.
Number 65. Ask yourself. Are you healthy enough to keep to a regular exercise schedule? Are you self-disciplined enough to stick to your prioritized to-do list? Are you smart enough to be able to debate current affairs? Are you brave enough to take a moral stand? Are you humble enough to ask for help? Are you strong enough to delay material gratification? Are you merciful enough to forgive those who offend you? Are you generous enough to share your good fortune? Number 66. Run the short road. The short road leads you to physical fitness. If you work out three or four times a week, in three or four months you'll probably be in good shape. This is a short road to a notable accomplishment. The short road leads to financial independence. If you offer a quality product or service, and you appreciate your customer and you keep improving, you will earn enough money not to have to worry about it. This is a short road to a notable accomplishment. The short road leads to strong personal relationships. If you smile at, listen to, and are generous with family, employees, and the public, you will be rewarded with many friends. If you are courteous, you will be welcomed anywhere. This is a short road to a notable accomplishment. Number 67. March the long road. On the long road, experience beats inexperience. Smart beats uninformed. Effort beats laziness. Politeness beats rudeness. Generous beats selfish. Fit beats fat. And interested beats bored. Be patient. Your time is coming. With time, everything passes from old hands to young. On the long road, time will reward the prudent investments you make today. On the long road, you accept the physical, mental, and financial blessings that you enjoy from following the action principles as you continue throughout your life to improve yourself and to give back to your family and society. Number 68. Close the door on the past. The past is alive only if you keep it alive. You can't change yesterday, but you can build today for tomorrow. Don't shackle yourself with regrets. Don't start feeling sorry for yourself. Whatever your previous circumstances, others have gotten through the same or worse. Appreciate yourself as a tested survivor, strong and determined. Learn from the past, but don't assume that your past automatically equals your future. Instead, fill your life with anticipation. Set your goals. Write your to-dos. Just because you haven't done something before doesn't mean that you can't start doing it right now. Be the new dynamic you right now. Number 69. Avoid thinking that. Avoid thinking that you need to chant or fast to find yourself. Avoid thinking that you need a lot of money to start a business. Avoid thinking that you need more than eight hours sleep. Avoid thinking that you need a personal trainer to exercise. Avoid thinking that you need advanced university degrees to be successful. 
Avoid thinking that you need to work 40 or 50 years before retirement. Avoid thinking that you need special physical abilities to become a black belt. Avoid thinking that you need more time or resources before helping others. Avoid thinking that you need to criticize more than compliment. Avoid thinking that the world owes you anything. Number 70. Count the time. How long does it take to exercise? How long does it take to stay informed? How long does it take to be well-groomed? How long does it take to read your child a bedtime story? How long does it take to say a kind word or deliver a compliment? How long does it take to clean up after a meal at a shelter? How long does it take to complete the next entry on your to-do list? How long does it take to vote? Probably just minutes. Number 71. Act with boldness. Everyone admires the bold, courageous, and daring. No one honors the faint-hearted, shy, and timid. Look around at what others have done and what you can also do. Everyone is afraid. The strong act in spite of the fear. The weak cower because of the fear. Timidity breeds doubt and hesitation that not only weakens, but can be dangerous. The coward dies a thousand deaths. There is a formula for personal development. It is the same formula for everyone. You must study, you must plan, you must practice, you must be tested. Some will shrink simply facing the task. Some will do the minimum and pass. Some will cut corners and pass. Instead, you must boldly welcome the challenge of honestly meeting the standards. Then, and only then, will you feel the true pride of accomplishment. Make a personal decision to do what it will take to succeed. These principles are known to many, but lived by few. Most people know what they should be doing. They lack the will, or the confidence to test themselves physically and mentally by starting a business, making an investment, or establishing a friendship. This is not the independent you. You are a person of action. Number 72. Rejoice in the day. You got up early. You did your best at work. You exercised your mind and body. You were pleasant to others. You did a good deed. You took time to reflect and plan tomorrow. You found a small way to spoil yourself. Take pleasure in your accomplishments. Be proud of yourself. If you keep putting together days like this, there is no telling how far you will go and how many lives you will be able to touch in a positive way. Today, you moved one day closer to achieving your goals. Celebrate small victories and small joys and small wonders. You did your best. Put your head on the pillow. Live vibrantly. Sleep peacefully.
Number 73. Do what you love doing. There are 5,000 different types of occupations. Choose one that you love. People have been successful at all of them. They are your models. You can do the same. When you love your job, it doesn't seem like work. If you are caught in dead end employment, use your free time to find a job that you can love doing or start your own business. There are unlimited activities to occupy your free time. Make sure that each of your days, weeks, months, and years are full of activities that you love doing. Plan to spend a lot of your time doing what you love. You are in control of your own happiness. Number 74. Appreciate your customers. It is the people who are going to give you their time, help, or money so that you can have everything that you ever wanted in your life for yourself and your family. These people are voters, and tenants, and fans, and customers, and clients, and patients, and teammates. Listen to them, appreciate them, support them. They hold the keys to your success. People who feel appreciated will remain loyal and will become your goodwill ambassadors as they happily sing your praises to others. By focusing on the needs of others, a wonderful thing happens. You get everything that you want. Customer service is important for the customer, but it is essential to your business. Without customer service, you don't have customers. And you don't have a business. Number 75. Build networks. You can go a long way by yourself, but you can advance much better, much faster with the help of others. Seek out others with a common purpose and help each other. Work through your mentors. Find them. Tell them why you admire them. Successful people will not be threatened by your enthusiasm for success. Sincerely ask for their help, and often you will be rewarded with positive suggestions and the names of contacts. Carry and exchange business cards. Rehearse a personal introduction that clearly and precisely states who you are and what you do. Form alliances for common purposes. Establish your own personal support systems. Where do you find good attorneys, physicians, investment advisors, dentists, tailors, or contractors? Ask those you respect for recommendations. If you have a computer, buy a contact management program, and as you meet new people, add them to your personal network database. Keep in regular touch with your network. Form your support systems and personal networks before you need them. Number 76. Build your team. In building your winning team to play a game or build a business, don't be afraid to pick people who are stronger, faster, smarter, better organized, braver, more ambitious, funnier, or more pleasant than you are. Ask your best people for recommendations. Think about the spirit on the best teams you were ever on and how your teammates cooperated in reaching a common goal. Think about the dignity and respect your teammates showed to one another. Think about how you were able to rebound from losses to play and win again. You want your team to be built on excellence. You want your team built with members of merit and character. Resist those who propose membership based upon patronage. Excellence is excellence and is not subject to conditions of race, color, creed, 
national origin, etc. If people are the best qualified to fulfill the team's mission, then that's what they are. If they are not, they are not. Number 77. Negotiate with power. Almost everything is negotiable. Research and prepare before you meet. Speak with quiet authority. Know what you want and will accept before you begin. Ask for what you want. You shouldn't expect the other party to guess what you want. Be sure that the person you are speaking with can grant your request. Be persistent. Try different angles of attack. Ask the other party to suggest a resolution. Suggest a compromise. Start the negotiation process with a lower than expected offer. Be reasonable. Don't argue or threaten. Respect the other party's position. Suggest logical arguments for your request. Clearly state your opinion and the repercussions to both parties if an agreement is not reached. When you finalize the sale or negotiate the deal, stop talking, shake hands, and move on to a neutral topic. Number 78. Offer freely. The single best word in advertising is free. So give freely and reap the rewards. If you are a hairdresser and need new customers, don't sit in the salon doing nothing. Hand out business cards, give free haircuts, and show your expertise. If you are a black belt, offer free self-defense clinics at factories, schools, fairs, and anywhere else that they'll let you. If you are an artist, donate one afternoon a month to teaching at the children's hospital. Look for ways to say free and keep giving. When you give with positive intent, you don't have to worry, nor should you have worried, about the benefits. You will feel good. You will feel appreciated. There is a universal human law of reciprocity. When you give something to someone, that person feels obligated to give something back. It could be new business. It could be media attention. It could be a testimonial letter. It could be a heartfelt thank you. Number 79. Work at work. Work expands to fill the time available. Many people will work only up to expectations. Some people work just hard enough to not get fired. Some people actually work as little as possible at work. No one likes the self-pitying whiner who slinks in the shadows while others do the work. These people create a window of opportunity for you. Don't worry about being obligated to work more hours to beat the competition. You don't have to invest more time. Instead, if you work all the time that you are at work, you will probably come out well ahead of your competition. Guard your time. Discourage interruptions. However, don't become lulled into mistaking activity for accomplishment. Follow your prioritized to-do list. Live and appreciate every day as an important day.
Number 80. Learn. You are responsible for your own education. When you want to learn about a new subject, go to the library. Go to the bookstores and buy books and magazines. Log on to the internet. Join a club or association. Find experts in the field. Ask questions and more questions. Take courses and ask your teacher questions. Don't just sit there. Make the course your course. As you begin a new subject or reach a new plateau in your studies, there may be awkward and embarrassing moments. Don't be afraid or think that you lack the aptitude to succeed. Everyone goes through the same learning curves. Work to understand the basics. Stick with it. Hunger for knowledge because knowledge is power. You don't need to attend famous universities or burden yourself with piles of college tuition debt. You can learn anything you want to learn. It is a gift that you give yourself. Knowledge is portable. You take it with you everywhere. The smart will defeat the strong. Number 81. Ask a lot of questions. The easiest way to get information is to ask a question and listen to the answer. Good parents, friends, students, and leaders aren't shy. If someone seems upset, depressed, or anxious, ask why. Ask and get to the point and you may be able to correct a small incident before it becomes a big problem. If you are rejected, ask a question and you may learn enough to succeed on your next attempt. Let one question lead to the next. Questions are stepping stones to self-improvement. The only meaningless question is the one not asked. On the receiving side, remember that the truth fears no question. Number 82. Read biographies. What if you could learn the success secrets of the greatest people who ever lived? You can. The lives of the famous and the infamous have been recorded in biographies and are ready for you to read and research. The lives of great government leaders, business people, and humanitarians are there. You can read about successes and triumphs. You will also learn how many times champions lose on their way to winning. In reading biographies, you may come to the startling conclusion of how much greatness you possess. You may conclude, hey, I can do that. You can make your life significant. Biographies help show the way. You only have to take the action to go to the library, bookstore, or surf the internet. Number 83. Be open to new ideas. There is always more to learn. Your employees, family, friends, suppliers, and even your competitors may all have suggestions that you can put to profitable use. Be open-minded. Observe, read, and listen. Be open to the fact that lots of people are going to have ideas worthy of your consideration. Welcome them. Incorporate the better ideas into your business and personal dealings. Find new ideas in books, magazines, videos, audio tapes, newsletters, trade literature, and on the internet. Find new ideas at conventions, seminars, lectures, and by taking evening courses. Seek new experiences and adventures. Who dares wins? We must guard against becoming unchangeable or apathetic.
Number 84. Heed the warnings. High voltage. Wear your seatbelt. Capacity limited to 150. Danger thin ice. Don't drive drunk. You may wish that you are invulnerable, but you are not. You are human, and your body can get hurt if you aren't a vigilant guardian of your own personal safety. Awful accidents may happen beyond our control. They are accidents and acts of God. But we are also often forewarned. A prudent person appreciates the warnings. On occasion, you may find yourself in the company of stupid people who don't care about their own safety or yours. Be courageous, speak up, and then leave them to their stupidity. Number 85. Observe and be aware. At first, observation and awareness will acquire conscious effort on your part. Over time, they will become instinctive and will be some of your most valuable skills. In business, you see ads and get ideas for your ads. You shop in stores and get ideas for your store. There is no point in reinventing the wheel. If a proven strategy already exists, find it and try it. In self-defense, you enter a movie theater and you make a mental note of the exits. You walk down an unfamiliar street and automatically scan for the unusual. Listen to the speech patterns of powerful people. Be silent. Think twice and speak once. Be an active listener. Look at the person who is talking. Don't interrupt. Be aware of their body language. Listen, and they will like you. It is arrogant to not listen. Your self-confidence in mind and body will create a charismatic aura. Ask questions. Stay informed. Get involved, read newspapers, books, and magazines, watch the news. Number 86. Read, read, read. There are few things that we can do that are more important than to instill a love of reading in our children. Reading is a lifelong gift. If you read, you can always educate yourself. It doesn't matter if you're reading from a computer screen, a paperback, or from a leather-bound classic. Rather than getting upset at life's delays, A.B. A.B. Always bring a book. And put your time to profitable use. Set the reading example in your home. Children only read when they see their parents reading. Keep plenty of books, magazines, and newspapers in the house for everyone to read and discuss. Set family reading goals and provide children with incentives for reading. Set aside a time each week for reading aloud as a family. Take regular family trips to bookstores and libraries. Make sure children are involved in a summer reading program. Encourage all family members to give books as presents. Number 87. Respect and defend all life. Who will speak and stand for the children, for the condemned, for those depressed or suffering in physical pain, Defend the rights of the old, lonely, homeless, unwanted, forgotten, and harassed, physically and mentally challenged and depressed. Our blessings morally obligate us to share our time, money, and expertise. The easy course would be indifference and apathy 
reflected in our silence. When we do not fight for every life, we jeopardize our own. As the 21st century dawns, how many alternatives are we willing to consider before we give up even one life? Can we reach out compassionately to those dealing with life issues? Don't we have enough time, talent, money, and love to keep trying? The strong and brave must defend those who cannot do this themselves. This is leadership. It is preserving human dignity and defending human rights. There, but for the grace of God, go I. Number 88. Honor the military. As we work toward world peace and we commit to finding nonviolent solutions to our problems, we must acknowledge that our freedom to do so has come as a direct result of those brave men and women who have served in the military. There is no doubt that without a strong response from good, evil would have triumphed. We must remain vigilant in our support of our armed services. Once we begin to rely upon demoralized troops to fight push-button wars, our security is jeopardized. Once we begin to believe that our defense can be left to others, we will soon be lost. Right now, we can do more. In every city and town, there are plaques and street signs to honor those who stood in our places to defend freedom. They left and did not return. They died heroes. They died for us. Yet we have allowed their memories to fade. School children do not know their stories. We do not know their names. Can you adopt one fallen hero from your town and proclaim his or her name as a hero? Number 89. Treasure the Earth. We are obligated to future generations to protect our world. Clean air, clean water, green open spaces, national parks, and preservation of our natural resources are everyone's business. Human beings are dependent creatures. Each of us must accept responsibility and do our part. We can be active supporters. We can pick up litter in parks and streets without worrying about how it got there. We can recycle and be aware of the disposability of the products we buy. We can plant trees. Others will notice our example. Educators and parents must work together to teach environmental awareness to our youngsters and, by example, the importance of conservation. Tread softly. Be mindful of the fragility of our planet. Number 90. Allow your opponent to save face. In business, sport, or everyday relations, always allow your opponent to save face. You won. That should be enough. Bragging is counterproductive. You simply present the opportunity for your audience to think the opposite. It costs little for you to offer your opponent the opportunity to excuse his loss. In fact, you may gain appreciation from many observers. 
To taunt or shame a defeated opponent may simply set the stage for another confrontation with the odds stacked against you. Your humiliated opponent may plot to redeem his honor by staging a rematch with more allies and more powerful weapons. You turn a quick battle into a long-term war. If you lose, do so with grace and good spirit. You won't always win, but you can always do what you believe to be right. For you, there will be another day. If you win, be gracious in victory, because someday, very soon, you will be vulnerable. Winning provides you with the opportunity to show both mercy and humility. Number 91. Thank your ancestors. Learning is a process of self-discovery. Usually, that self-discovery is based on the trial and error and experience of those who have come before us. Someone ventured forth from the safe warmth of the prehistoric campfire. Someone hankered for a better life overseas. The curiosity and bravery of others has given us the knowledge to live long, comfortable lives. The human race is stronger and more adaptable today than ever before. Whatever you hope to accomplish with your life, the going will be easier because of the hard work and chances taken by those who came before us. Be grateful for the explorers and scientists. Be grateful for all the teachers who pass the love and enthusiasm for their subjects to us. Be grateful to your parents. Be grateful to your personal mentors. Be grateful to anyone who took a personal interest in you. Continue down the path. Respect those who work on your behalf. Someday, You will be old and you will appreciate the repayment of others' kindness. Thank your ancestors. Number 92. Practice peace. Peace begins within each of us. We find it in our quiet time and personal reflection. It is shown in the understanding and forgiveness that we extend to each other. We can only teach peace by becoming examples of peace. Becoming peaceful, we extend peace to all we encounter. Peace is not a faraway place, but right here, right now. Peace is not born from weakness. We must practice peace. As people of action, We must assume the mantle of defenders of the peace. We must remain vigilant and ready and willing to take the action to protect those in our neighborhoods victimized by bullies. Enemies of peace must never be appeased through our apathy or encouraged by our indecisiveness. Number 93. Make everyone feel important. Teach with enthusiasm and your love for your subject will spread. Sell your products or service with enthusiasm and your company will grow. Presume that your students and employees or customers are your equals because they are. Don't teach or sell down to anyone. Speak with and not at your students or customers. Learn and use people's names. Make everyone you meet feel important. You can't be selectively likable. If you try to like some people and not others, you will eventually be seen as a phony. And no one wants to do business with a phony. When you talk down to people, you shift the focus from your subject or product to your condescending attitude. 
Listen. Be patient. Pay attention. Don't interrupt or fidget. Make eye contact. Smile and nod encouragement. Don't try to top another story with your own heroic tales. People love to be involved in projects which they help design. Help others to identify and develop their strengths. Be quick to praise and slow to criticize. Look for opportunities to teach others about the action principles. Number 94. Give generously. Follow the action principles and you will be blessed with much more than you need. You will work hard towards your goals and you will be liked. Just these two attributes will result in your being well rewarded. Your organization abilities will allow you to have more time than most. Your persistence and determination will get you more financial rewards than most. You must earn before you can give. Share your time and money. Send lots of flowers, candy, emails, handwritten cards, teddy bears, and thank yous. Extend a helping hand. Smile, compliment, tell jokes, laugh. Remember names, anniversaries, and birthdays. Be generous, and then forget it. Selflessly share your time and money because it is right. You will set in motion a chain of positive actions and reactions. To be unselfish, sharing, generous, bountiful, magnanimous, noble-minded, and gracious is much more about attitude than about money. As much as you give, much more will you receive. Number 95. Share the credit. If you organize a group to clean up a park, let everyone enjoy the thank yous. If your sports team wins a competition or makes a good showing, be proud, step back, and let everyone walk around with the trophy. If your sales team meets its objectives or if your customer service department solves a tough problem, take everyone out to lunch. Let everyone laugh. As a leader, your greatest satisfaction could come from seeing the people in your team, department, or company succeed. Share the credit and experience the camaraderie. You know who you are. Let others glow in the feeling of accomplishing a mutual goal. Be enthusiastic for others. Acknowledge exceptional work. Encourage cooperation. Your reward will be many friends. Are we ready to say, yes, we can do more? Yes, we can give more. Number 96. Promote the action principles. The action principles are yours. You can toss this book into your pocket, purse, or pack, and when you have a free moment, read a principle. The surest way for you to stay on your personal journey to peace and prosperity is to get involved. All the work that you do for us helps others and reinforces your own commitment to success. Take action. Spread the word and help us help others. You can tell co-workers and friends about the action principles. Send them to success.org to learn more. You can give a copy of this book to someone you care about. You can check that the public and school libraries in your town have copies of this book. If you are able, purchase and donate copies of the book to social or educational organizations. Most importantly, 
you can be the example. Share your success and your knowledge. Number 97. Walk the talk. When you live your life with concern and love for others, wonderful things will happen. You will be fulfilled. You will feel a warm pride from your selfless acts that will allow you the grace of humility. To be first, you must put yourself last. The true leader goes to the end of the line. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Be sure your words match your deeds. Can you lend an ear to one avoided by others? Can you work an extra shift for a parent who needs to be with a sick child? Can you visit a shut-in? Can you speak up and defend a poor soul being teased or bullied? Can you treat all people as your brothers and sisters? Your example may become contagious. The greatest sorrow is to be lonely and unloved. Refuse to let this happen with your idle consent. Right now, the days of homelessness, hunger, and unsafe streets can be over if we make the commitment. Number 98 teach our children. A respect for all life. The benefits of hard work and frugality. The value of physical fitness and healthy living. The merits of military and public service. The importance of charity and volunteering. A pride in heritage, home, and country. The advantages of courtesy and manners. The power of knowledge. The blessings of positive thinking. The strength and self-reliance. The goodness of man. Faith in God. Children will only learn from us as we become the example. Number 99, be a mentor. If you want to learn firsthand about a new subject and drastically shorten the learning curve, one of the best ways is to find a mentor. A mentor is an experienced person who is doing or has done what it is that you want to do and agrees to be your guide. Many successful people remember their own early struggles and gladly agree to serve as mentors especially if you are an enthusiastic, appreciative novice. Besides sharing their knowledge, some mentors offer the additional bonus of sharing their contacts and networks. Imagine being able to consult with a senior partner who has been there and done that and whom you don't have to pay. As others are willing to help you, don't forget your potential role as a mentor. This is what the action principles are all about. One person helping another who helps another. Even a small amount of time can make a big difference to a newcomer. Listen for the wise words of experience. Number 100. Call to Action. It is the people who make a country great. In every country, brave, compassionate people of action must be willing to assume the mantle of leadership and face the challenges to education, law, government, health care, the environment, and human rights. If you live the action principles, this person is you. Even as one, your example can make a difference. Your strong moral stance can give courage to the many who face the relentless evil intent of a few. 
This is a call to action. Following the action principles will show you the clear path to peace and prosperity in your life and beyond. Pass it on. Thank you.